All right, so this is 8a, which is simplifying expressions. These are rational expressions, just mainly that there's variables in the numerators and denominators, and it's a fraction um, or division. So we're looking at, first, number one, we have a monomial in the numerator, one term, and one term in the denominator. Um, and just keep in mind, you can only simplify when there are factors. So thinking, looking at factors here, we have 24 and x and 24 and x squared. The 20 and 4 and 20, the coefficients, we can simplify those. 24 and 20 are both divisible by, you, and you can do this by 2 if you want every time. Well, let me make that smaller. And then 12 and 10 can be reduced by 2. So you divide by 2, and we get 6 fifths. Or you could have just divided by 4 right away. And now you have x to the first and x to the second. Um, you can do one of two things. You can do 6x and then 5x to the second means x times x. And then you can look at reducing, eliminating one of the x's. Or the actual math behind this is you do the looking at the exponents, 2 and 1, with the have like base as the x's. And 2 minus 1 is 1. And so, so it'd be x, 2 minus 1 is x to the first, and the biggest exponent is in the denominator, so that's where it will, it will put the x. So it's sub subtracting exponents when dividing like bases. All right, number two. So again, we have factors. Factors just mean multiply. You have 70 divided by 70. Sweet. Those will just simplify. You can always put them in. 70 divided by 70 is technically 1, so we can have 1s there. And then m to the fifth divided by m to the fourth, we are subtracting exponents, 5 minus 4. The biggest exponents in the numerator, so I'm just going to do this, 5 minus 4. And you'll go m to the first over 1, which m to the first is m. I guess we should have a times 1 because there's a 1 over here. And 1 times m is m. m to the first is m over 1. We don't need that. It's just going to be m. 100 over 30. So I know both 100 and 30, those are your coefficients. Those are factors. 100 and 30 is both divisible by 10. So divide by 10, divide by 10, 10 thirds. That's it. End of the seventh, end of the third, like basis. So what we're going to do when we divide, we subtract exponents. Look at your biggest exponent. The numerator has the biggest, so 7 minus the denominator. And we'll have 10 n to the fourth over, and that'll be three. Now, if you're struggling with the way I'm doing this, you certainly could do this 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 7 n's multiplied together is the same thing as n to the seventh, and 1, 2, 3, that's n to the third, and you can simplify this way, leaving you with 10, 1, 2, 3, 4 n's, over, there's no ends left in the denominator, just the, just three. So either way, you can work this out. Um, much better to learn the actual rules in case you have like n to the 21st. That's going to be a lot of writing it out, but you certainly could still do it. Number four, four fourteenths. So we have our factors four and 14 can be divisible by two. Two sevenths r to the third divided by r squared is subtract exponents. So three minus two is one. So we have two times r to the first, or just two r over seven. All right, number five. We no longer have factors. These are terms. So we need to factor this. Numerator. So what's the greatest common factor? Always start out with GCF when you're factoring. Biggest number I can divide out of 70 and 20 is 10. So I'm dividing both terms by 10. So I have 7n plus 2 left. And the denominator is a monomial. We're not going to factor that. At this point, we're going to look at, I mean, you could factor it, but there's really no need. We have the 10 over 80. That will reduce to... 1 over 8, divide numerator by 10, denominator by 10. 1 times 7n plus 2 is 7n plus 2. 
And in the denominator, we just have an 8. Mm -hmm. Number 6. All right. Looking again, we have terms. We have additions here. So we have three terms in the numerator. And we look at greatest common factor. Well, we have 1, 12, and 27. No greatest common factor there. That 27 doesn't have a case, so there's no GCF. So we now have to look at how can we factor this further. Well, it's a quadratic and it's a trinomial. So we're going to look at A times C. And what two numbers multiply to 27 and add up to 12? So that is 27 and 1, no. 9 and 3, yes. First term top left, last term bottom right. The 9 and 3. 9 times 3 is 27. 9 plus 3 is 12. We need it to be 12K, so it's 9K and 3K. Because now that now these terms will add up to the middle, the 12K, the middle term. So now we're looking at the greatest common factor of each row and each column. So the bottom row, greatest common factor, biggest number you can divide out of both is 9. Top row. It's always the smallest of the variables, so k. First column, k. Last column. There's no k in the 27, so 3 and 27, both are divisible by 3. Positive 3 because it's a positive first one, first term, and it's a positive 9. So we have the numerator we're going to change to, or not change, but Rewrite it as two factors, k plus 3 over k plus 9. The denominator already has a k plus 9. And now we look, once you have everything factored, there's nothing to factor, no greatest common factor in the denominator. Uh, it's already a linear term, so there's nothing to factor further. Linear meaning the exponent on the variable is 1. Now we look to, can we simplify anything? Well, sure can. Now we have our factors. So our k plus 9 is simplify. And we have k plus 3 as the answer over 1, which is k plus 3. All right, number 7. Again, we have terms here. So the terms, we are going to look to greatest common factor. Greatest common factor of the numerator is 2 and m. So we're going to divide a 2m out of each. So first, it's going to have an m left over, just m in the numerator. The second term is going to have an 8 left in the numerator. In the denominator, there is no greatest common factor there. So now we're going to we got to start factoring over there. And it's a quadratic and it's a trinomial. So we're going to look at a times c. So 1 times 16 is 16. What two numbers multiply to 16 that add up to negative 10? Oh my goodness. That's negative 8 and negative 2. Quick little punnett square. First term top left, last term bottom right, other two numbers and the other two blanks, so they have to add up to the middle term. Greatest common factor is 8, because the first term here is negative, it'll be negative 8. Top is m, top is m, top row is m, or top column is m, and last column is 2, and because it's negative, it's negative 2. So we have m minus 2 as a factor and m minus 8. Looking at our factors, only monomials can simplify with monomials, binomials can simplify with binomials, and trinomials can simplify with trinomials if they're factors. The only factors we have here, the m minus 8 and the m minus 8. We cannot simplify 2m and m minus 2. 2m is a monomial, m minus 2 is a binomial. They are not similar, they're not similar factors. So they will not simplify at all. So we're left with 2m over m minus 2. Number 9, greatest common factor in the numerator. There isn't one. So we do 1 times negative 8. So negative 8. What two numbers multiply to negative 8 that add up to negative 7? Well, they already, we already got them. Negative 8 and 1. So... First term, top left. Last term, bottom right. 1x and negative 8x. Take out your greatest common factors of each row, each column. 
and we have x minus 8 and x plus 1. And the denominator is the same deal, no greatest common factor. So then we look at, it's a trinomial, it's a quadratic, so we can factor, hopefully factor this further. So we do 1 times 56, that equals 56. What two numbers multiply to 56 that add up to negative 15? That'll be negative 8 and negative 7. Do your, greatest, do your Punnett square quickly. X squared, 56, negative 8x, and negative 7x. Those have to add up to the middle term. Greatest common factor of each row. Bottom row is negative 8. Top row is x. First column is x. Last column is negative 7. X minus 8, x minus 7. Now it's factored. This is the fun part, simplifying. So what in the numerator, binomial x minus 8 and x minus 8, those are both binomials, exactly the same. They're both factors. And what's left is x plus 1 in the numerator and x minus 7 in the denominator. They are not like factors, so they will not uh, simplify at all. Then our next, we have, again, factor or terms. We have a binomial in the numerator. Look at your greatest common factor. Of the first two, it looks like it'll be 7r. So you divide each term by 7r. In the denominator, the greatest common factor looks to be, oh, I think it's the exact same, 7r. Crazy. So 14r squared divided by 7r is 2r. 63r divided by 7r is 9. Looking at, remember, factors just mean multiply, so 7s can simplify, the r's can simplify. And then what's left over here is the 3r plus 7 and 2r plus 9. Unfortunately, they are not the same binomials, so they cannot simplify. Number 11, looking at greatest common factor of the numerator, there isn't one. So then we look at, it's a trinomial and it's a quadratic, so we do a times c. So 1 times negative 21 is negative 21. Well, multiplies the negative 21, that'll add up to negative 4, the b, and that's negative 7 and negative 3. Do your greatest, or do your Punnett square quick. Negative 7x and 3x. Greatest common factor of the bottom row, top row, first column, last column. So we have x plus 3, x minus 7. In the denominator, look for your greatest common factor. They all have x's. All of the terms have x's, so x is going to be your greatest common factor. So we have, I'm going to rewrite this over here. So x times x squared plus 5x plus 6. The middle term, or the trinomial here, we got to look to see if we can factor that further. It's 1 times 6 is 6. What two numbers multiply to 6 that add up to 5? That's 2 and 3, so let's do a Punnett square quick x squared, 6, 2x, 3x, 2, bottom row, greatest common factor, top row, first column, last column. So ultimately we have the x from the greatest common factor, x plus 3, and x plus 2. So looking at numerator and denominator, what can simplify? Looks like x plus 3s. Leaving us with x minus 7 in the numerator, and x and x plus 2 in the denominator. And number 12. We have greatest common factor of the numerator is 10r. And so it will be 5r minus 8. In the denominator, greatest common factor is 10r. So left with that is 7r squared plus 9r minus 10. Looking at oh, and then 10r on the outside. 7 times negative 10 is negative 70. And what two numbers multiply to negative 70 that add up to 9? So negative 70 and 1, negative 7 and 10, negative 5 and 14. There we go. So let's do a Punnett square quick. First term, top left. Last term, bottom right. Negative 5r and 14r. 
Various common factors. This is a this is a tough one. So we have 10r as the greatest common factor, then r plus 2, and 7r minus 5. What's in common here? We have the coefficients 10 can simplify, the r's can simplify, and that is it. 5r minus 8 over r plus 2 is the mono or binomial, and 7r minus 5. And there we go. Hope that. Hope